let me tell you a story about a bunny. And I swear it has a point. My name is Carla Narragon. I'm a therapist and I've been doing this for about 20 years. My area of expertise is PTSD. I've been working in the addiction field for about the past five years because there is a huge overlap between addiction and PTSD. So I want you to imagine a cute, adorable, fluffy bunny hanging out in the forest eating grass. It is a gorgeous day. Bunny is hanging out, the sun is shining, it's a blue sky, and all of a sudden the animal hears a really loud sound. And what happens is that the animal will sit up. What it's doing is that it's orienting to the possibility of danger. So in less than a millisecond, the eyes get big, the nose flares, the mouth opens, the ears kind of flex open. The bunny is sensing its environment with every fiber of its body. Because it could be a coyote, could be a tree branch falling in the forest, who knows? So the nervous system, the first phase is going into orientation. Well, sure enough, there's a coyote eyeballing it. So that bunny, the nervous system of the bunny shifts from orientation into flight. Cortisol is released in the body, adrenaline, uh, blood is pumping to all the major muscles. Basically, it's the equivalent of rocket fuel being released inside this animal and it takes off and it's running and running and running and running and running and it's it's leaping over boulders and dodging around trees and running over brooks and running and running and running and it sees its favorite little hidey hole right over there and it sees it and it leaps and it jumps and it's safe and the moment that animal has the felt sense of safety the nervous system will release all of the excess energy that was mobilized for survival so the animal will shake and tremble and cry and shit itself and vomit and all those nasty bodily functions because what the body is doing is it's pushing everything out and then it will come back to neutral. And when the nervous system is back to neutral, that bunny is going to hop out and eat more grass like nothing ever happened. Animals in the wild face life and death situations multiple times a day and they're not traumatized. Human beings have the same capacity. But here's a clue as to why bunny is not traumatized and humans get traumatized. Bunny is not doing this. Oh my God, I don't have time for this. Stop shaking. I have to go to the grocery store. I have to pick up the kids. Somebody's gonna see me. I'm gonna be so embarrassed. I'm gonna make somebody uncomfortable. Just suck it up, put a smile on your face. Big bunnies don't cry. You don't have time for this. Be, be grateful you're alive. Just suck it up, put a smile on your face, and you walk out that door right now. Deal with it. Bunny doesn't do any of that. It just goes in and it comes out. And then it's fine. What is PTSD? Let's define PTSD. I told you the bunny story, so that kind of lays a foundation. Bunny's not traumatized. So I'm gonna draw a little picture, okay? Okay, so X marks the spot where bunny is in a neutral position. And this maybe is orientation, where bunny hears something scary and it could be a threat, it could be a tree branch, we don't know. And then we discover it's a coyote. So bunny goes into rocket fuel mode. And around here is where bunny feels safe. Escape the threat. And then down here, we de-escalate. Uh, bunny is releasing all of that energy and coming back to neutral. Human beings get stuck right about here in the middle. In human beings, we unfortunately also have the ability to stop what goes up from coming down. And that's where trauma is born. Trauma is in the body. It is not in the event. When we stop ourselves from crying and shaking and expressing what is inside, when we stop ourselves from allowing all of those emotions to come out, we create a space in our bodies for trauma to exist. So let's say that you had some kind of traumatic experience which led to internalized trauma because you didn't release the pain.
And let's say that that spot inside of you represents anxiety. Anxiety can be felt as tightness in your chest, an overwhelming feeling of sadness and hurt and anger all at the same time. It can be experienced as sweating, as fear, as a palpitating heart, a need to shut down. You have another event in your life because we live in a world that's loud and sharp and pointy and, and things happen. So over a lifetime, you may have a series of events that step on that place of woundedness. And then one day you find yourself reacting in a larger than life way, which isn't appropriate to your circumstances because those tags inside of you are getting stepped on. So here's some good news. I've got good news and I've got bad news. Okay. So let's say that this fear, um, stress, sadness, anger, this is connected to multiple events in your life. Let's say each line represents a traumatic experience that resulted in internalized trauma. The good news is that you do not have to relive every single bad thing that happened to you in order to heal. Because the feelings associated with sadness, anxiety, fear, and pain, your nervous system can't tell the difference between one thing and the next. It just feels what it feels. So if you allow whatever's come up to finally come down, then you are releasing that emotional charge that is related to all of those experiences. We live in a world that absolutely worships being happy. We value feeling peaceful, even keeled, and above all else, normal. If we feel sad or someone we know feels sad, we immediately jump to tr trying to talk that person out of their feelings. In order to heal, we need to allow ourselves to experience the full range of emotion. In order to allow what goes up to finally come down, when we, are ex when we feel those feelings of shakiness and fear, we need to allow that to finish. One way of healing is to find a therapist, a trusted friend, a program, a sponsor. I don't care what it is, but to be able to find a person that you can create a safe place with so your nervous system will start to release that pain and suffering and to have a way of allowing those feelings to come out. So when I'm working with a client, step number one, establish safety. Next, I need to increase your awareness of what's going on inside of you. I need to help you increase your awareness of your physical experience, your mental experience, and your emotional experience. Most people that are traumatized live from here to here. They don't want to feel what's going on in the rest of their body. That is an appropriate reaction to a traumatizing experience. And it's supposed to be temporary. It's not supposed to be the place that you set up home. It's not supposed to be the place where you live. But for many people, it is the place where they live. So my job is to help you become more embodied, which is great news. Because imagine that you're driving a car and you've got a dashboard with a hundred lights on it and you can only access three of them. I'm going to help you get in touch with all of the lights on the dashboard, which is going to make life a lot more exciting and fun and interesting. And sometimes it'll be uncomfortable. What I find is that a person's capacity for joy is equal to their capacity for pain and suffering. We cannot undo history. Once the glass is shattered, we can't unshatter it. But what we can do is release the emotional charge that is attached to the memories. 
so that you can live your life without being haunted by the past. And when you release those feelings and you allow them to drift away, uh, the memory is still there, but then it drifts to the back of your mind instead of popping up here and scaring the bejesus out of you and interfering with your life. That is the benefit of therapy. The bottom line is this. If it hurts, get help. It doesn't matter what happened to you, how long ago it happened. If it hurts, get help because you have a right to exist.